There are other reasons why we care about microbes, of course, and that is because some of them make us sick. And there are diseases called, caused by bacteria like Staphylococci and Pseudomonas, some of which are shown here. There are protozoan parasitic diseases caused by Entamoeba, Giardia, and Plasmodium. There are fungal diseases caused by Histoplasma and Candida. And of course, all of these microbes that we've talked about have their viruses. And there are also viruses that infect humans that cause disease such as HIV, poliovirus, and influenza. But it turns out that the organisms that cause disease are a small fraction of all those that are out there. Most of them are, in fact, beneficial. Many microbes live in a close relationship with another organism. We call that a symbiotic relationship. And when both the microbe and the other organism benefits, we call it a mutualistic symbiotic relationship. An example is the bacteria in our intestines. We provide those trillions of bacteria with a place to live and some nutrients, and in turn, they give us nutrients in exchange, they help our immune system develop, and they provide countless other benefits as well. We can take this mutualism a step further. Some organisms, in some organisms, the bacteria not just live in them, but they actually live inside of their cells. And this is called endosymbiosis. It's very common in insects. And this picture shows an insect cell that's full of vesicles of bacteria growing in them. This is not at all harmful. In fact, it's beneficial for the insect. I'll give you an example of an endosymbiosis. And this takes place in the aphid, a common insect that uh, lives off of plants. The aphid drinks the sap of plants in order to live. And that's all that the aphid drinks. However, sap is made largely of sugars, and animals cannot live on sugars alone. Within the aphid, and in fact within the cells of the aphid, is a bacteria called Buchnera aphidicola. And that bacteria takes the sugars that the aphid eats and converts them to other compounds like amino acids so the aphid can grow. So the bacteria gets a place to live and gets sugars, and in turn, the aphid gets to grow. So I hope that you have learned today that you'll be able to define a microbe. I hope you'll understand the differences among archaeal, bacterial, and eukaryotic microbes. I hope you'll appreciate that microbes are everywhere on Earth and that they outnumber every other living thing on our planet. I hope you'll know why microbes are essential for life, and I hope you'll appreciate how microbes have shaped the earth. You just completed your first video of the world's best medical exam preparation. Lecturio brings the knowledge of worldwide leading medical experts and teaching award winners to your PC, tablet, or smartphone. Prepare yourself and check your progress with thousands of quiz questions customized to USMLE standards. And the very best, you can get in touch with our medical experts personally. Visit Lecturio.com now and continue with the most inspiring medical education around the globe, anytime, anywhere.